Observation collects facts, reflection combines them, experimentation revives the results of that combination. Denise Didio. Hello to you and welcome to the second training unit permutations and combinations of the fourth model, mathematical thinking and problem solving. The title of this training unit may be ambiguous for a math teacher like you. Indeed, it is possible that you ask yourself a set of questions like the following. Are you going to attend a combinatorial analysis class? What can you learn about this that you do not know? Is this a new course? in combinatory analysis has combinatorial analysis changed and you are not aware of it if you have asked yourself this type of question it is quite normal because it is a part of mathematics with which you have necessarily been in contact as a student and today as a mathematics teacher rest assured in this course you will not be teaching university level combinatorial analysis course however before presenting the objectives of this training unit, allow me to answer the following questions. Why a training unit on permutations and combinations? As you know, the AIMS Teacher Training Program, TTP, aims to give you the knowledge, skills, and attitudes necessary to make the slogan, learning and teaching mathematics differently, a reality in your classroom. This is why we will never stop saying it, because it cannot be done without you. In the first training unit of this module, we presented all the theory relating to mathematical thinking and problem solving. However, we did not keep a promise made during the presentation of said training unit, that of equipping you with all the necessary strategies to instill mathematical thinking in your students. Indeed, as we have emphasized during the training unit using mathematical reasoning to solve problems is one of the most fundamental goals of mathematics education. In this training unit, we will be presenting a concrete example of strategy to implement mathematical reasoning with permutations and combinations as case study. On the other hand, Permutations and combinations is one of the areas of high school mathematics in which most students have difficulty, despite the many real-life applications of these concepts. This difficulty or challenge can be reduced by adopting strategies that will help learners make sense of what they are learning. The strategy we offer you should not be used as a magic cube to put in all the sources, but rather be used as a guide that can allow you to apply mathematical reasoning in your classroom. In his posthumous work, Arts Conjectante, the 18th century Swiss mathematician defines combinatorial analysis, also called combinatorial, as the act of enumerating all the possibilities of combining, of mixing together a given number of objects so that no grouping form with these objects is omitted. So combinatorial analysis, also called combinatorial, is the study of the different ways of arranging objects. It is not the enumeration of all the possibilities, often long and tedious, but the establishment of all the possibilities by a calculation. Combinatorial analysis is thus mainly concerned with the problems of permutations, arrangement, and combination. History of combinatorial analysis. Very early on, men wanted to count their objects, their animals, etc. The first traces of counting appear on the board of the Shango found in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, dating from 20,000 BC. On this board, we can see notches showing that men already counted at that time in Africa. We find traces of combinatorial analysis in Chinese traditions around 2,900 BC. In the second century BC, Hypatrius, a Greek mathematician and astronomer, claimed that there were 103,049 affirmative clauses composed from 10 elementary clauses. 
the 12th century Indian mathematician Bhaskara determined the binomial coefficients and Jason it in the 13th century wrote the relationship between the number of arrangements and the number of permutations to be. In the 18th century, Blaise Pascal and Pierre de Fermat, by founding the calculus of probabilities, clarified the notions of permutations, arrangements, and combinations. Pascal determines using his triangle the binomial coefficients. However, it seems proven that the formula of the binomial is already known to the Arabs in the 13th century and to the Chinese in the 14th century. Why teach combinatorial analysis? As we highlighted in the F training unit of the third module, in order to capture students' interest in mathematics, it is necessary to refer to the applications of mathematics during your lessons. As speaking leads and example teaches, said by Joseph Chobet, this is why in this training unit we want to give you some examples of the importance of combinatorial analysis. Combinatorial analysis is an interdisciplinary field. It is applied in computer sciences for the calculation of the complexities of algorithms and programs, in biology in particular in genetics, and to solve the problems of endemic diffusion, in chemistry in particular in crystallography, and to enumerate the structures of molecules, in human geography for the enumeration of populations, in the theory of games of chance, loto, blackjack, poker, etc. Combinatorial analysis forms the basis of mathematical disciplines such as probability, arithmetic, networks, and others. As you can see, combinatorial analysis has several applications in other scientific disciplines and forms the basis in several mathematical disciplines taught in secondary high school. Mathematical thinking and problem solving apply to combinatorial analysis. In order to examine how the concepts of mathematical thinking and problem solving can be applied to permutations and combinations, we give the following example based on the notion of factorial. We will focus here on two aspects the problem situation, and step-by-step -step application of mathematical reasoning. The goal of the problem situation is to create that challenge that your students will want to overcome. The situation may not be something that they will encounter in their daily activities, but it is something that is interesting enough to captivate the students and give them something they want to resolve. The problem situation is as follows. This February 11th, for the youth day, the principal of the high school invited the following three artists, Mostik, Le Charismatic, Takam, and Le Rigolin, to each perform during the school's fair. However, each artist wants to go last to mark the spirits more. To remain in passion, the principal decides to print out the various possible order of presentation on papers and to have one of these papers drawn at the start of the show by the best students in the school. The question now is, how many filling sheets should the principal print? Although the situation is created just for the lesson on hand, it presents a problem that is interesting enough for them to want to solve, even if it is only to overcome the challenge. Of course, most of the students will be unable to solve the problem with their existing knowledge, and thus they will be motivated to follow the lesson to learn the concepts and skills that will enable them to overcome the challenge. They will invest and engage themselves. The mathematical thinking at this stage takes the form of questions 
that the students begin to pose to themselves and each other. As they begin to think about the problem, they begin to think about how they can possibly solve it. They try to apply knowledge and concepts, but they will soon realize that the problem may be too complex. The lesson must then provide an activity or some other opportunity for the students to discover the concept that will enable them to solve the problem situation. The following activity is an example and identifies the mathematically thinking that occurs at each step. Students working together in small groups in the preferred method, but it can be done individually. Each step in the activity is a specific instruction that will lead the learners to derive the concepts of factorials. The prerequisite knowledge for this activity is the ability to draw three diagrams. Let us follow along as if we are doing the activity ourselves. Step one, take three pens, all of different color, for example, black, green, and red, and assign a color to each artist. This step will allow your students to identify the elements that will be permitted. Step two, we can draw flags representing the order of presentation of these three artists. For example, if Mostik, the charismatic, goes first, his color is first on the flag. If he goes second, his color is second. And if he goes third, his color is third. Draw as many flags as you can with your three colors by changing only the colors of each section of the flag, but not the form. This step will allow your students to use current knowledge to determine the number of permutations. They will most likely perform a visual comparison and stop when they cannot continue. Step three, how many others of flats were you able to identify? The groups or individuals will quantify their results. Step four, can you organize these flats using a tree diagram? Indeed, this question assumes that your students know what a tree diagram is. This assumes that you have checked this prerequisite at the start of your lesson. This step will allow your students to use a graphical representation for visualizing permutations. Step five, how many options do you have on the first level of the diagram? How many do you have at each subsequent level? These two questions will allow your students to quantify the tree structure and begin to develop an understanding that will lead to the derivation of the general rule. To direct your students to the derivation of the general rule, we move to the next step in the worksheet. Step six. Using the tree representing how many flags can you create with four colors, example, black, green, red, and blue. Using the tree representation, how many others of flags can you create with four artists? Assuming artist La Legion also wants to be part of the show. Via this question, your students will modify the tree structure and have more information to derive the general rule. The objective here is to allow them to observe how adding elements changes the tree structure. Step seven, how many options do you have at each level of the tree. What change? This step 
will allow your students to observe the changes in quantity. At this stage, it is a question of getting your students to derive the general rule themselves. To do this, step eight poses the following questions. Step eight, do you see a pattern? Can you make a general rule for how many others or flats you can create with a certain number of artists or colors? Now that your students have derived the rule, they are about to apply it. Step nine, using your general rule, how many flats can you make with seven or 10 or 15 different colors? As you can see, quality questions were asked at all levels of the activity. It is possible that at certain stages, your students will not be able to respond concretely to the questions asked. In this case, as you circulate among the students, you must prepare questions that will allow your students to get around this difficulty. Note that we have said questions and not answers. Points to remember. After the activity, you and your students can make the following written record, which can be taken as a course note in your learner's notebooks. Definition. In mathematics, the factorial of a natural number n, noted n factorial, is the product of strictly positive integers less than or equal to n. Let n be a natural integer. Its factorial is formally defined as the product of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times all the other numbers times n minus 1 times n. And by convention, we set 0 factorial to be, to be equal to 1 so that 0 factorial is equal to 1 factorial, which is equal to 1. Example, 3 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. While 4 factorial is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which gives us 24. As a mathematics teacher, Applying mathematical thinking and problem solving in your activities during your lesson is a necessity and even an obligation. Through this training unit, we have presented an example of an activity applied to the notions of permutations and combinations on which you can base yourself in order to build your own activities. As we have pointed out, the activity can certainly be used as such in one of your lessons. However, as you know, it is not the foot to adopt to a shoe, contrary to some beliefs, but it is the shoe that must adapt to the foot. Likewise, it is not your students who must adapt to your activities, but your activities that must adapt to your students. To do so, you have to know your students well. As you know, coming together is a beginning. Staying together is progress. Working together is success. Don't forget to share your ideas and questions in the forum. You can also go to the TTP Community of Practice platform via the following link in order to discuss with the members of your cluster. Alone, we go faster and together, we always go further. See you soon in the next training unit.